Hi everyone, we are now going to review problem 95B in your book on page 354, dealing with notes receivables. So there's a few items there and uh, well, more than a few, I guess, right? <laughs> a couple transactions for year one and year two, and we're going to prepare the journal entries for each one. So in year one, Springer Company here accepted a 4,890-day 8% note in granting Steve Julian a time extension on his past due accounts receivables. So you can see there on the bottom of um, your screen that we would debit notes receivable and credit accounts receivable for the $4,800. So that occurs on November 1st of year one. Their year end is December 31st. So remember, any interest that has been earned from November 1st through December 31st, even though it's not due to be paid, must be recorded as interest revenue by the end of the year. So we take the $4,800 times 8% times 60 over 360, or 60 days um, of 360. So interest receivable would be debited for $64 and the interest revenue account credited for $64 because that's the portion of the interest that has been earned on that note in year one. What happens in year two? Okay, there's Julian paying off his note. So received Julian's payment for principal and interest on the note dated November 1st. So this is a 90 day note. So the total amount of interest on this note would be 6,400, or I'm sorry, 4,800 times 8%. Remember that's an annual interest rate. 30 days occurs in the new year, so 30 over 360. So since we're using 360, assuming 30 day months, I just wanna go back to the de December 31st. If you're sitting there going, isn't there 31 days in December? Shouldn't it be 61 days of interest? No, um, only 60. It's 30 day months, okay, and um, so November would have 30 days, December would have 30 days, and then January, of course, would have 30 days, and the note is due on January 30th. So $96 is the total amount of interest, 4,800 times 8% times 90 over 360, $96. Remember, 64 of that was already recorded as interest revenue because it was earned last year. It's sitting in interest receivable waiting for the cash. So we'll debit cash 4,896, credit the note receivable for the $4,800 principal, credit interest receivable for the $64 of interest that was recognized last year and recorded as receivable, and then recognize the $32 of interest or 30 days of interest that occurred in January as interest revenue in year two. Okay, so this is one note started in year one and ended in year two. How about the next note? February 28th, the company accepted a $12,600 30-day 8% note in granting a time extension on the past due account from King Company. So now we'll debit notes receivable, credit accounts receivable, King Company. Then on March 1st, the company accepted another note, a $6,200 60-day 12% note in granting Myron Shelley a time extension on his past due accounts receivable. Again, debit notes receivable, credit accounts receivable. Remembering that notes receivable is an asset account. On March 30th, the King Company dishonored their note. Ooh, right? So February 28th, up here was when King Company converted their note. They were supposed to pay that amount plus interest at 8% within 30 days. Well, let's calculate how much interest should have been accrued or, or is accrued. 12,600 times 8%, 0.08 times 30 over 360, $84. We will show that $84 is interest revenue 
and credit the note receivable. This is no longer a note receivable. The time is expired. We will then put the total amount King now owes in accounts receivable, $12,684, until he either pays that or creates a new note. On April 30th, Shelley pays off their bill. So here's March 31st was the day we converted Shelley's accounts receivable. Shelley's accounts receivable was converted to a 60-day note, 12% interest. So calculate the amount of interest on this note by taking the principal times 12%. Remember, that's for a whole year, though. We need to know interest for 60 of 360 days, $124. So interest revenue is credited for the 124. Notes receivable is credited because it's being, um, it's, it's finished, the time is up. And Shelly is paying the cash of 63.24, so we debit cash for the total. Going to June 15th, accepted a 2072 day, that's bizarre, right? 8% note in granting a time extension to R. Solon. So we'll debit notes receivable, credit accounts receivable for 2000. Notice we don't do anything with the interest the day the note is created because no interest has occurred. Same with Felton. June 21st, we converted their $9,500 balance that they owe us to a 90-day 8% note. Debit notes receivable, credit accounts receivable. Now, R. Solon is paying off their note in the 72 days. Remember, they have that bizarre one, right? That's 72 days. So we take 2,000 principal times 8% times 72 over 360, $32 of interest. Credit interest revenue, $32. Credit the note receivable 2000 because he's not only paying off the 2000 but also the $32 in interest. Debit cash, $2,032. September 19th, received the payment of the principal plus interest from Jay Felton for the June 21st note. So on June 21st, we converted Felton's accounts receivable into a note receivable for 90 days, 8% interest. So we're gonna calculate interest, 9,500 principal, 8% interest times 90 over 360. So the interest on this loan, interest revenue, $190, credit it, Credit the note receivable, it is now being paid off, 9,500. Debit cash for the total, 9,690. On November 30th, the company decided to write off King's account against the allowance for doubtful accounts. So remember up here, King said, oh, convert my accounts receivable into a note receivable on February 28th. We did that. March 30th, he dishonored the note or the company dishonored the note, put it back into accounts receivable. By November 30th, King still has not paid off that note. Bugger, right? So we debit the allowance for doubtful accounts, credit accounts receivable for the total. So that takes us back to part one of chapter nine, right? But that's how we record notes receivables at their inception. So it could be converting an accounts receivable into a note receivable. We showed you in the very beginning what happens if one note, a note begins in one accounting year and isn't collected till the other. And then what happens when a company doesn't honor a note during the year? And we had a lot of practice with companies honoring their notes. Part two. If Springer pledged its receivables as security for a loan from the bank, where on the financial statements does it tell you that? So when a business pledges its receivables as collateral, what does that mean? Springer borrowed money from the bank. The bank said, we need 
one of your assets as collateral. So if you don't pay us back, we get that asset. So Springer said, okay, we'll give you our accounts receivables as security. If we don't pay you back, you can take those and collect them. All right. So when a business pledges like that, it's receivables as security for a loan, and the loan is not paid back yet. The business has to tell decision makers about it in notes to its financial statements. This is a requirement because the business has committed a portion of its assets to cover a liability, which means if the business dishonors its obligation, the creditor can claim the amount of receivables identified as collateral to cover the loan. And that's what I was just telling you about. So in accounting, in the real world in accounting, we are required to tell people about things we're doing like this. We just don't hand them four pieces of papers with numbers on them. There's a lot of writing that goes into accounting, and this is one. So I'm going to make sure I put a link for you to click on so you can see a typical financial statement note when a company pledges its receivables. So watch for that in the announcement area. Other than that, we are done with um, problem 95B. Please post questions you may have.